just various things, Brendan. Just throwing out some examples, no, whether I'm, you believe I'm, them or not. I'm, I'm very, I'm not being specific. I'm being very general, very general. That something is what it is, right? And you could lie about it, but that's not going to change what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. And it, even if it is, let's say it's, a, let's say it winds up being a flat Earth. If you're just wrong about it, I don't believe that you're lying. If you're up. Uh, if you're just wrong, but uh, there's a couple people. If it's flat, there's got to be a few people up top who know, you know. But what I mean is, if the Earth is round, I mean, let's say, let's say, uh, no, if the Earth is flat, but they're lying and saying that it's round, that doesn't mean that that doesn't change what the Earth is itself. I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. Right. So it doesn't it, it, it doesn't matter what somebody says. Right. I mean, it, it's not going to change how it is. It's about the only logical thing I've ever heard you say, Brenda. Uh, that, that caught me off guard, too, SE, man. That caught me off guard a little. That was a good direct thinking, you know, thinking for yourself. Right. So what other people say about it doesn't matter all that matters is what it is and it's a globe right i think so yes so so you're comfortable in your little globe and uh good with you good that, on you that was an honest answer too man that was an honest answer i see we're i think we're rubbing off on her a little bit man she's yeah, coming clean yeah. 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 no matter what always, no matter what the yeah. case be she's she's given honest perfectly honest Fair right. answers. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked think, myself. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I think there are tests that you can conduct, which would show one way or the other, with certainty. Name which, me one. Which one? Name me one test that'll show that the Earth is a globe. Go ahead. Well, I I would look at it from a very very high altitude. Right. That would do it. And how would you get up there? Well, I couldn't because I can't. But that would be that would be a, a way to do it, right? Yeah, but since you can't do it, you would have to rely on somebody else's word on it. Right. I would so, have to rely so throw on somebody that one else's out. word. Yeah. Well, why can't I rely on somebody's word? You can, but it would be a belief then. Um. Sure, but there's nothing wrong with beliefs. No, I agree. There's nothing wrong with as long as you say that it's a belief. I'm good with that. No, no yeah. problem. Well, the thing is, is that everything is a belief, right? Not necessarily. No. Well, I think it is. I think that everything. When I say, for instance. If I were at a very high altitude and I looked and saw that the earth was flat, that would also be a belief. No, because then you would actually see it if you reached a high altitude and you saw that it was flat, it would no longer be a belief, correct? No, I think that's, that's what a belief would be. That would be a belief. So you're calling an observational fact a belief? Yes. Okay, that, that, I'm good with that. Right. It's a belief that happens to be true. You can call it whatever we want as long as we understand what you're referring yeah. to. That's I'm fine great. with that. That's yeah, great. yeah. This is how, this is why um, you get so triggered because this is how I think. I think that I have beliefs, and those beliefs can be based on a trust of somebody, or they can be based on my observations, which are but they're still beliefs. And then and they have. We're into bringing we're into bringing the logic tonight. That's for certain. And they have. I mean, I, they I, have, I disagree with anything you've said, man. Pretty much. And, you know? and they have degrees of, of confidence of whether or not they're true or not. So, so you don't think anything can be a hundred percent true? I think logic can be a hundred percent. 
think anything in, in reality could be 100 percent true, like water existing. I think well, that's 100 percent. I could be a brain in a vat, so it could be reality. So it could be that all my beliefs are false because I'm really a brain in a vat. So it could be. And there's where you lost me. <laughs> hold on, Brian, hold on, Brian. I'm talking about in our reality, right? We're all sharing this reality and your reality and your brain in a vat reality. Water exists, right? hundred percent. I could be wrong. I could be hallucinating. I could be. I understand dreaming. that. But in this hallucination that we're all sharing or you're, you're having or whatever, it says you don't think it's a hundred percent that water exists in this reality. And this hallucination, whatever it, it this is, it could be a if it's a hallucination, then it's not true. Right? Inside the hallucination, this is all we have to work with is inside your hallucination. Right. If it's just inside my hallucination, then it's then it's um, only it's not true. It's just a hallucination. You were doing this so is, good, This is hard for solipsism. Until you, no, uh, sorry, it, uh, it's it's just we have to all we have to go on is what how this reality. Right. That's all we have to go on. I'm talking about a hundred. I'm talking about does water exist 100% in this reality? Yeah, I think it exists. But 100%. I don't, I don't think I can say absolutely 100%. That's where the disconnect comes in. In order yeah, for their crazy. fantasy to exist, there cannot be 100%. That's crazy, Brenda. That's what it is. I think things like uh, one plus one is two. That is 100%. You don't think water exists, well, Brenda? Are you serious? Well, what, if, what if you're I just a... Say, I think it does exist. Yeah, this is always the issue with these, these kinds of conversations, which is like somebody says, I get to a very, very high degree of probability. The other person's going, so you're saying it, it isn't. You're going from like 99.9 percent, .9 and then you're going. So we're saying it's zero, and it just breaks the conversation. Right. And, and, no, and why everybody... can't you? No, why can't you say 100 percent? That's the issue. Because people can be no, mistaken. Yeah. It's more no. than 100. Doesn't mean There's zero. no mistaking yeah, about water. There's no mistake about water. Water exists. You could be wrong. That's that's just the <laughs> thing. You could be wrong. Okay, Brenda. Okay. <laughs> And I, 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 I should have known better to, to say to writing, I, I think... writing on eggshells, it, it, I don't know how to do any, any, make it more. Make oh, no, I don't think argument. it's a fault. Yeah. I don't know how to do it any yeah, better I'm... than what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I don't yeah, yeah. know how I'm, to. I'm not, I'm not making this a fault on your side. I have the same no, conversation re regularly with people. Yeah. And I'm just, just saying to you, I'm... how do I do yeah. it any, any different? I don't know how to it's, do it any better. It, 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 I... I have the same conversation even with people who aren't flat earthers and in, in my experience is it seems it seems that it creates a fair bit of dissonance for people that they that, that certain people have a have a strong strong preference for certainty that suggesting that you could still operate meaningfully in the world without being certain of certain things um is just sort of causes them to react rather than listen and respond well, I, I have as high a degree of confidence that yes, water does exist. It is um, um, that I'm sitting at a table in front of my computer and talking to you guys. As that's that's as certain as just about anything can be. But yeah. I can't I can't just go all the way to 100% absolute certainty. I just can't. Well, I I, I think it's I, I, I even aside from whether it's possible. I think it's disadvantageous too. I think it makes people uh, closes their mind to the possibility they're wrong. And we can all accept that other people can be wrong. Right? We all of us in this room have a belief or, or or think that other people are wrong from time to time about things. I happen to also think that they're most wrong a thing about the things they're most certain about. Things they get really right. fed up about are the right. ones they're more likely to be you know, reacting rather than right. So I, I, I have a high degree of confidence that, that the Earth is a globe. But if I had really good evidence that the Earth was flat, uh, I, I would, if it was really good evidence, if, we, if it really was, I would change my mind. And I would say that I was wrong, that the Earth is not a globe, it's flat. Now I, I can't I can't foresee that I I can't it's hard for me to believe that but it is possible. 
Okay, what in your daily experience would possibly lead you to believe that you're living on a spinning globe surrounded by water and air next to a vacuum? What in your daily experience could possibly uh, make you believe that? The existence of a South Celestial Pole. A South Celestial Pole makes you believe yeah. that you live on a globe surrounded with water the that is spinning. Never saw. What? I've seen the South Celestial Pole. I haven't. Right, that's because you live too far north. I mean, this is one so of what makes you then, one of Aristotle's. This is one of Aristotle's bit of evidence that we live on a globe. But the southern stars appear higher in the sky as you head south. Yeah, but the cameras don't do it no justice. The Southern Cross travels the whole damn sky from fucking one side to another. But when you look no, at the star trails, it looks like a it looks like a tight little loop, and it's I, not. It doesn't it doesn't cross one side of the, the sky to the other. That's just wrong. It's right in here, the South Celestial Pole. Yeah, I live small in constellation. I live in Minnesota. I have never ever seen any of the constellations in the Southern Hemisphere. So I've what never, did it for you then, Brenda? I've never, well, I don't see the Southern Cross. I have never seen okay, it. Okay, so what? Okay, we got that. You haven't seen so, the Southern really Cross, right. understood. So what made you think that you live on a sphere surrounded with water and, and air next to a vacuum was my question. Because, because if it was flat, I could see the Southern Cross. Bullshit. But you don't even know that it's there until somebody told you. What made you but think everybody that? Everybody says it's there. They see it. I think his point. I think his point is you. You probably came to the conclusion about the existence. I, of I a come to the conclusion earth. based on the preponderance of evidence that sh that yeah. that tends to that it comes from high quality sources, right? And also the um, uh, things such as uh, sunrise, sunset, the phases of the moon. Um, eclipses, uh, solar and lunar eclipses, none of these can be explained by the flat Earth to my satisfaction. Fair enough. But this is not uh, anything that you came up with. So my original, my original question was you. What, what made you think of... Of this. So you see the sun setting and you see it going up and down, right? Right. right. Okay, so does that equal ball? Does that yeah. equal fear? It means that the earth isn't flat. It can't be. So without somebody... Ha if nobody have... Uh, sorry. If nobody has ever told you that, like put that in your mind, you would have came up with that idea yourself? Seeing a light travel from one side to the other, in your head you would say, "Tis globe." After that, um, seeing the sun or the moon partly obstructed by the leading edge of the curvature of the Earth, right, shows me that it must be curved. But not the sun traveling. Not the sun traveling from one side of the other, like you said before. Now you're changing it. No, I'm talking about sunsets and sunrises and moonsets and moonrises, right? That can't happen on a flat Earth. It can't. Why not? <laughs> Where were funny. you at that you saw this and said this can't happen? You had to have been somewhere to see that. Because if it's always above the plane of the disk of the Earth, it can't ever go below it. It goes okay, below disc. it, so it can't ever, so it can't ever, so it can't be that it's always above the earth, plane of the disk of the Earth. Okay, it so you think be. it's a disk in the, in the, in space? Okay. Well, what else you does think, flat you mean? Think that, wow, Chad does speak. I don't think I've ever heard you speak before, Chad. What, what else would it mean <laughs> for it to be flat? You could be a brain in a vat, but you couldn't find an explanation to explain that. Jesus Christ, man! What, what you went from what, logical what, what to fucking. What would explain it? What moves away and doesn't set? What, what moves away and doesn't drop down? Earth's the Earth. globe, Brenda. Amy. Hold on, Brenda. You said you're 100 percent Earth's the globe. No, she didn't. I said I'm. I have a high degree of confidence. Uh, 
Which is your degree of confidence water exists higher than the Earth being a globe or vice versa? Uh, I think water existing is a higher degree. Because I think I would have to literally be a brain in a vat for, be, for me to be mistaken about common things like water, earth, trees, rocks, plants, things like that. Brenda, even if you are a brain in a vat, this is the reality we're talking about water existing in. It doesn't matter if you're a brain in a vat. Then everything changes, yeah. That's kind of the point. What if in this it's reality, solipsism. What if it's in this reality, it's you're not brain in a vat? We're all speaking and nobody's speaking. Well, Go ahead, Mike, and you haven't said anything. I'm, I'm doing my best. Um, SE I Montreal, I, I come into uh, Bev's Discord every once in a while on the live stream and poke at you guys every <laughs> once in a while. Yeah? I, I would be open to debating Bev on his logic, but I will not go into that Discord. Oh, come so on. If he's, if he's willing to meet me or anybody else somewhere else, I'd be I'd be willing to do that, but not on his Discord. Just do it here. G Would G you be willing to do it here? Um, if I have mod powers. What? I, I, no, gonna what? I'll to, mod I'm it. I'm going to need to control it. I, I'll mod it. Yeah, I don't think you can mod your own debate. Nah, I'll mod it. I think Bev, well, well, I don't Geo. want to speak for him, but I, I can run it by him for sure. Sure. So you, or something. you'd be willing to debate Bev on what? On logic? Is that what you said? Well, uh, I don't know what issue in particular, but yes, his he claims to have a proof that level is horiz horizontal is level. And I haven't seen that proof. Um, he simply talks about having it, so I haven't seen it, but I'd be willing to talk to him about it. Okay, I'll, uh, next time I see him, I'll, uh, I mean, next time I speak to him, I'll he, run he it by might, him. He might not, because he, he, do, he's, he, he doesn't, um, I probably am not uh, 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 important enough. He'd probably rather talk to uh uh, blue marble science or somebody like that. I'm not important enough, I suppose. I don't know. I, let's not assume anything. I don't know what he uh, what he thinks. I know that a lot of times when you come in, you're very, um, shall we say, not. Um, very polite. Can no, I put it that way? You guys aren't polite, so I, I kind of see it, see politeness as like an agreement. And if you're not going to be polite, I'm not going to be. You just be yeah, saying some crazy ass shit is what it is. I don't know if you're trolling us sometimes or what. What? Just when you say like crazy stuff. What crazy stuff do I say? I don't know, Brenda. You can measure the amount of space time in a table, shit like that. That yeah. dog bone one? That, the bone is a clock? That's, that's just like literal science, right? Yeah, really. Carbon gonna... 14, carbon 14 in the bones of, of dead animals acts like a timer, a clock that counts down the years since that animal died. That's how about how about the space how time in the table? All right, well, we got you on that one. How about the space time in the table? How do we measure that? Um, the way you locate things is where they are in space and where they are in time. You said we could measure the amount of space time in a table. Yeah, you would measure that, right, by... Right, it's, how it's, much? It's in my kitchen, and it's been there for three years. See, this is when I think you're trolling us. For real, you're I'm talking I'm about the right object, now, right? You're not talking about space time. You're talking hey, about it, a object. I'm saying what up? that's how. What you, up, silent? That's what up? how you measure. That's how you tell where something is. Something, right? yeah, but a not a space time. time. Brenda, yeah, when you're talking about an ob object, I understand that. But we're talking about space time here. Brenda's got a good point, though, dude. 
Like if you okay, have, so I got he has that good three years. If you have a smartwatch, for example, Mono Mute again. If you have a smartwatch and you have a, um, you're collecting the data from the smartwatch in 24 hours, and uh, you know it's just in a warehouse, two story warehouse. Uh, the data that it could be collecting is the X, Y, Z positions of of the watch, and also the time, um, and that would be the four coordinates, um, the four dimensions of that of that of that data, and space time. And there's a lot of things in real life that like like Brenda, Brenda was describing something in her kitchen that's been there for years, uh, meeting somebody at a certain place and time. Uh, you know, these are these are, these are very real, very real things. So how much how much space time's in the table? It's been in my kitchen. Is there three years worth of space time in it? it it's just a bad question. Is is right? It, where you locate things is where it is, and what time it exists. What time a period of time it exists? My table in my kitchen wasn't there three thousand years ago. It's so it has today. three years worth of space time in it. it it's it's not. It's not like that. It's about it's a coordinate system, right? It's a coordinate system. So you can't measure the amount of space. See, I brought this up because you were, you, you know, you say like trolley shit, like you can measure the amount of space time in a table. And now you're trying to like, you know, come back and say that you can't, which is fine. A... Sorry, Jeremy. It's not a coordinate system, though, is it? Space time. The it fabric has to bend. Yeah, it has to bend. So stuff falls. Uh -huh. right? That's right. Can't be just a coordinate system. Has to be bending. So stuff falls. No, you can warp it. Uh, like the, for instance, if you're making something in Blender, you can imagine just the space dimensions being no, warped imagine. by something. I thought we were talking about real, real. Imagine. I'm, I'm giving you a three-dimensional coordinate system so that you can understand. Well, it. No, I have. Why do we need to imagine this? Yeah. I thought we were talking about reality, bro. I haven't had I haven't had anything to eat since uh, uh, lunch, and it's uh, eight o'clock here. I'm gonna have chili and stuff, and and catch you later. Enjoy. Yeah. Once she said space time. She knew she was done. Oh, so you know damn well. You know damn well. You can't tell me how much space time's in a kitchen table. <laughs> nice yeah, one, Jeremy. Question, man. Nobody, nobody would pretend to take that question seriously, man. But um, regardless, the space, the space time, it could be a coordinate system, and it's, it could it definitely if something had, let's say, ever any given object, um, or any given event, has uh exists in the coordinate system of space time just like that smartwatch i was telling you about you can you can tell you can um pinpoint every every moment of that watch and the place it was in the, in the time with just those four coordinates except they're not the coordinates coordinate system is not Prime is... yeah it's not symmetrical right you have the gravitational waves or whatever that are not symmetrical so it's not really an effective coordinate system if that's the case. The scale is different within the system. Well, there, but that's something we found out was that the coordinate system uh, gets distorted by the mass that exists in it. If there's any information in the system, uh, the system becomes uh, distorted. Yeah, but that's not a coordinate system. A coordinate system is supposed to be unchanged, right? You're supposed to be able to map it out because they're the reference points. If the reference points are moving, then it's kind of a shit coordinate system. Not really. I mean, it, you can. It's not that it's moving unpredictably. It's moving uh, in a way in which we've been clever really? enough to. Uh, an asteroid comes from the middle. Of yeah. The, the point is, a coordinate system doesn't. First of all, humans invented coordinate systems. So if that's all space time is, then space time didn't exist before humans existed. Hold on, we're missing one thing here. A coordinate system is static, X, Y, Z, right? Why? There's well, no you can T have, there. You can, have so moving, you can have a moving. Well, yeah, but, you know, X, Y, Z. Z is a, a theoretical concept. Can you have a moving coordinate system? system? Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can have same thing, well, Jeremy. Uh, can you have a moving coordinate system? Have you ever heard of an inertial reference frame? Yeah, but in that coordinate system... The coordinate right. system is not moving. Yes, it's it is. not moving, guys. That's why it's called the non-inertial reference frame. But I have a car yeah. that I made a grid on no, that I said this is how that, far everything is from crucial. the uh, headlight. A moving, a moving reference frame can still be inertial. 
Yeah, it can be inertial in some uh, different frame, obviously, in reference to something else. But the key I'm thing not is, talking about it's, that. No, it's still not inertial. inertial. The points need to be relative to each other, or else, like if the points start moving amongst each other, it's not a reference. It's not a X, Y, Z. They can't be moving. It's still, it's still a coordinate system. Like I said, we don't make the rules. We just, we just find them out. And it ha just so happens that there's a coordinate system, in which can be distorted, and those distortions can be predicted. Only so in your mind, it's 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 actually. Only, only in your mind, like, 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 like tesseract, and you're saying it's a coordinate system. It's oh, ridiculous. Hold on, one second. One second. Einstein, Einstein is claimed to have found properties of space time. He didn't find properties of a coordinate system, now, did he? A space time is the construct in which you know, everything exists in. So, so we, we have to define it by its coordinates. No, man, you're, you're, make you're making <laughs> shit up, Kosho. <laughs> Sorry, bro, but, you know. Trying to squeeze blood from a rock. So you don't think that it, you don't think that uh, space time is a coordinate system? No, no, because space time is a fabric that warps and moves and sloshes and there's all kinds of crazy things. You know that, Kosho. Or space time is just fake. Well, yeah, of course it, it is. It, it, and slush and do all that kind of stuff. What happens is when it's when there's no information, it's static. And uh, the way I guess you would expect um, a reference frame, I mean, a, a, a coordinate system to be. And any information that's inserted into it, like mass, um, distorts it uh, proportionally, predictably. No, that, you know, that's so not true. That, that's... All the mass of the entire universe, do you know where it is? Do I know where all the mass is? Yeah. And all the know, movements of it is. Our, is our knowledge that good that we know every little asteroid, what, how it's moving, every oh, single thing? Didn't okay, they determine so most of the mass of the universe as a coordinate was system in if it's not because we don't have that information? Yeah, but the, it's the the mass, the gravitational effect of this mass, of the warping, it's going to be uh, there's going to be relevance, you know, in like let's say our galaxy, for example, things inside our galaxy, things near our stars, we can see exactly what. Um, we can see exactly how big a mass, um, you know, what kind of warping it's going to do, and predictably, like we've been able to predict that for hundreds of years, even before we knew it was warping in space time. So, so the the closer masses know, the, all the mass. that we can observe um, matter, but the ones that we can't observe are negligible. Well, no, I mean, if they're affecting us, we know that they affect us uh, based on its distance, uh, you know, uh, the square root of its distance or whatever. But if it's far away enough, then the effect is, is next to the next to ne negligible, right? But I thought we could use this thing to know where the masses are even before observing them. Why do we have to observe them now to know how to, you know, distort or change the well, We have to see their effects, but I mean, I mean, was it Uran uh, no, Neptune was found just by its effects without before they ever saw it. And there's lots of stuff like that. Black holes, a lot of times are found just by looking at their effects. And, so we uh, could do it both ways. We could observe the mass first and then change the coordinate system, or we could, um, you know, see the gravitational waves and then say that there's a mass there. Sorry, guys. We don't change. We don't change the coordinate system. Uh, we don't change. You know, the, we don't warp space time. We see the effects of warp space time, and we infer that there must be a mass there. That that happens sometimes. Sometimes we see mass and we infer what effect that mass is going to have. No reason why you can't do it both ways, yeah. It's all uh, uh, theoretical, though. You must agree, right? I'm pretty sure it's the most successful uh, theory, and in, in, uh, I think maybe the the standard model might be technically more successful. But you know, it's been tested. It's been tested against for a hundred years, and um, only been substantiated and new things found out about it. Yeah, but it's still at best. It's not even a theory, actually. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's even a step be before that. It is actually a theory, believe it or not. The experiments they call were it trash. That. They call it that, but I, I don't think it even reached the theory stage. Because isn't that after the test? There's they did. They claim to have hundred years. They claim to have bullshit ass fucking experiments. Bullshit. I can name uh, tons of tests, dude. Tons of tests that are in any. 
Dude, they predicted they predicted exactly when they were going to observe a supernova. That's okay, prediction isn't a prediction isn't an experiment though, is it? No, it's a prediction based on the model, based on the theory. Which so, you mean experiment. experiment. If you, you can, if you can experiment. predict a, super, a supernova with a theory, with um, a model that's included in a theory. Just an observation. Sure. So what? It was just an observation. Yeah, what an was observation the test that, 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 that validated that observation? Yeah, this is you predicted it. You predicted saw it, it was right? Happen. I'll give you that, even though it's not true. You predicted it. You saw it happen, right? How did you test it? Uh, you made the prediction, and you saw that it was it happened. That's in itself is a test. No, no, absolutely not. You, you hypothesized something. Let's say at best, I'll give you you have a hypothesis, right? Sure. Okay. Now, what comes after that? Well, they made a prediction based on what they thought was going to happen. And they rented out the Hubble space, the, the, the Hubble telescope for that specific night. And it turns out they predicted a supernova, which is uh, not really something you can do. Okay, how did they verify this now? You just went into space with a telescope. It. How can they, we verify this? They saw they saw the supernova in the telescope. They took pictures of it. Yeah, they saw an event in the sky, but how can we verify this? Is the question. What are you talking? About? They predicted. How can it was we verify happen. your, your you have they took pictures? So pictures is enough for you. Yeah, if someone you? tells me there's a supernova, and then um, it turns out that there is one. That's enough for me. Yeah, they weren't the only ones who took pictures. They, they, there, there's. Uh, private people who observed it. So it's not a validated test, though. It is it's merely a hypothesis and an observation and a picture taken. It correct? is absolutely validated, and oh, it's not so. only that. This is this is only a uh, a tiny. Um, this is like a tiny test compared. Okay, to like can you go through the validation tests. process for me, please? I I went over this with you like four times. They made oh, a model. Said, they made a you said there was a, a prediction. They predicted when the supernova was going to occur based on they time took a dilation. Picture of it, based on right. time dilation and gravitational lensing, and they confirmed it by predicting when it was going to happen, observing it, taking pictures of it, and having private uh, observers also take pictures of it. <laughs> Kosher, you're you're going around in circles, bro. They predicted it, they took a picture of it, they saw it, then you went back to the prediction, and then more people yeah, saw dude, it. If, you're, if somebody says, hey, supernova is going to happen two weeks from now, they're like, okay, it's, fuck this guy, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Because nobody can do that. That's not something you can do, right? But these people were able to use Einstein's uh, theory, including time dilation and gravitational lensing, to see when this, it was a supernova that had already occurred, but the lensing was being lensed in another location. So it was going to be, it was basically like it was happening four or five times surrounding this um, star, but they had to use time dilation and gravitational lensing uh, to predict when this was going to occur. And they- There's still no correct. proof. There's still no proof of the validation. Where's the validation process, bro? You're just saying words. Yeah, I'm telling how you is, the how words is it validated? that they took pictures. The, the, the words form a pretty oh. compelling argument. Yeah, no, dude. <laughs> For that that supernova explode multiple times, that's his. That's their excuse that he's throwing. Oh, mommy, let me let me ask. What if I give sure. you another explanation for well, that? Let me oh, ask sure. Sure one less one one more thing. Uh, did they just predict like when it would happen, or also like where it would happen? Oh yeah, they they predicted, and I think there's another there's another one that's supposed to occur too. They predicted based on the um the mass that was on that side of the the star that was being lensed around or whatever. Uh, they were able to use the the mass to predict exactly how long it would take um, for the you know time based on time dilation and the lensing and everything. They were able to predict. I think they were one day off. They might have been one day off or a few hours off, but they were still. I mean, that's that's still extremely impressive. Nobody can predict supernovas like that. So, bro, you just said words. I can give you an an, an alternative explanation for that. Are yeah. you ready? People with telescopes have been looking at these lights in the skies for years, and they notice when two of them get together, there's a big flash. There's the SC prediction of, of the flash in the sky. Who's right? 
Can you name any other instance mean? where somebody predicted a supernova down? Yeah, it's better than that. It's be- yeah, here's my give prediction. Me, give me the. Uh, you know. Here's my prediction. They, they just now found the new phenomenon that uh, supernovas aren't standard candles like they thought. Like we, well, they still kind of are for them, but uh, but they uh, that they found some that that uh, that go supernova multiple times. So they clock, they check it, they fucking record how long it takes after you see two, two or three. And you can map out the amount of time that uh. You're that about. You're the, gonna... the, the standard candles are specific supernova type one a type uh, one. Yeah, but they had no explanation for why that the the ones they found recently. Well, that, that doesn't that matter. Have, Those uh, aren't gone supernova, and then uh, and then gone supernova again. Those aren't those aren't standard candles though. They were supposed to be though. No, they're not. You... The type type one a supernova is the, are the standard candles. You're going to make me go I, dig up the article. I, We've already had this conversation, man. That was one of the things I threw at y'all's ass when I read it. About how they I mean, uh, were shocked when they seen a star that went supernova go supernova again. They have so they no explanation. This is a while ago. So now they see that there's some of them that, that go supernova multiple times. So they don't I'm explode sure, and sure. go away like they predicted. They predicted that, that they happens. explode and go away. I'm not. I'm not saying that that, that didn't happen. What I'm telling you is that Type One A supernova are specific supernova. They're not. It's not. Uh, it's not like that just because these supernovas that they are saying do that, that doesn't have anything to do with standard candles. They keep changing it, bro. First they use certain stars as uh, standard candles, then they want the supernovas. It's all changing, all conjecture. None when, of this. When, when did they is not a use test, uh, Kosho? When and you did, know when it, did they bro. not use um, Type One A supernova? Before, didn't they use a standard uh, sun? A certain type of uh, I forget what kind of was it a variable? They called it something like that. Before oh, yeah, a supernova, but that's also a standard candle. But I think even Hubble used Type One A supernova. Yeah, yeah, but before the supernova. I mean, for Hubble, like. No, not Hubble. They used a certain I think, star I think even Hubble, though, as I think Hubble a reference point for Nova. distance. Yeah, Kosha, look it up. You'll see. But that's not the point. These, Even that, what I'm saying now, the, my point is, it's not testable. It's just, it's not even a theory at this stage. It's just a hypothesis at best. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the most powerful things that you can do with science is make a novel prediction and have that prediction yeah. come true. Mm-hmm. The prediction be based purely on your, uh, your, your model of your, your theory. Agreed. But uh, if you can't follow it through the testing process and the verification process and being able to pass it on to somebody else and they can uh, test and verify it for themselves, yeah. how is that anything? That's because you're you're assuming that that this one observation, which utilized Newton uh, Einstein's um, uh, theory, was the only test for time dilation and uh, gravitational lensing. When there's those those are some of the most uh, wide ranging tests uh, in general general theory of relativity. Like there's a test where they have the clock, they have like a light emitting on a tower or whatever, and they're testing uh, grav. Gra- uh, gravitationally based um, time dilation and they shoot the light up and down the tower they shoot it uh every one second on the second they so it's being emitted every second and the light is being received uh every less than a second so the intervals in between the times that it's emitted and it's being received uh are different and it's not that it's off like there's a delay it's that there's a second in between the times it's emitted and there's the earth is supposed to be in- Kocho, that's all based on the fact the Earth is supposed to be in motion, bro. Oh, all the time dilation tests are based on, on the fact that we're supposed to be in motion that's and we're supposed to be the one spinning, bro. Right? You cannot use them distances. That's not You're based not on that. You, you got to prove all. the distances. Why bro, you, you got to prove that? It's not based on the Earth moving. Oh my God! I just told you it was gravitationally based time dilation. Prove gravity. All, prove them distances first, sure, bro. You just heard it somewhere. You read it somewhere. How can you possibly perform, dude? How can you possibly believe in such a thing as gravitational 
Time dilation, because dude. Of these tests, dude. These, these are just tests words that, you that heard, people, bro. That these tests that exist. <laughs> what test? What test? I literally you just, just they predicted it. that. What is the test? I literally just explained the test, dude. No, what? Really? Yes, really. He probably it's, went to the bathroom and just got back. I the, just explained the, the test. Was? Anyone other than Kosho? Anyone what? Repeat what, the, what the test was? Yeah, they predicted supernovas. Is that the, that the test? No, the test it's I, I just said about the, the, the gravitational, the, gravi the time dilation, gravitationally based time dilation using the tower when they're emitting light up the tower and they're emitting it every second and they're receiving it the intervals in between um, the receiving uh, uh, sensor was less than a second, which is what they, which is also what they predicted. Well, I, I'd say GPS satellites are another strong test because they had clocks running in different rates, and they they still keep synchronized. Words that... again, words you heard, something you'll never be able to test and verify. Well done. Yeah, I myself, yeah, of course. But that's different from saying that there's no test that has ever been done. That's a different claim. Right? I said a it's verifiable showing... test. Not something that you make up in your head, something tangible that you can pass on. I was very clear about that. Still there any tests that make this burden that demonstrate the Earth's flat? By Earth's We're talking flat, time not... dilation here. Sure, okay. Tests that demonstrate that time doesn't dilate. I, I, I guess first the burden would be on you to show like space time, right? The fabric thereof. And then the we no can proceed, I guess. The no is the answer then. I've demonstrated my, my hypothesis that time is constant and is unaffected by gravity. Well, that's your claim. I, I, I would counter that and say there's no such thing as time. Prove time to me. Okay. So. No tests is what you're saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. I was very clear in what I said, sir. So you do have tests or you don't have tests? It's Never like said anything about tests. I don't, I, don't, I don't have tests because I have a reason for not having tests. You're talking about tests. What tests are you talking about? I need to support your conclusion. I didn't make a conclusion. You brought up tests. What tests are you talking oh, about? So no, so no tests. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, thank you. No further questions. <laughs> really? Okay. If you think you accomplished something there, I mean, okay, fine. Well, it's just interesting, you know, there's tests are required on one side, uh, and then you can sort of pick apart and you know, run it by the QE test and do all of that business to validate to, to confirm for yourself that it's not a test but then when asked what tests you have seemingly the answer is like prevarication or, or a long way of saying none what you try to do here sir is reverse psychology now nice try if you have an argument raise it or don't try to play games with me so sure. do you stick to the same burden when it comes to these Requiring there to be tests, requiring the tests to be validated. Do you stick to the same thing with your own hypothesis? Of course, it works both ways, obviously. Anybody, I don't care who you are, yeah. which, which side you're on. If you make a claim, yeah, of course, you have to be held to the same standards. Okay, and do you make claims? It's not about me. If you oh, want, you want to, you, you want to come in? Listen, dude, eggshells, you want to come into our conversations by using reverse psychology and asking me something? We are talking about what we were talking about. Now, if you want to change the subject, that's fine with me, but don't, don't think you got away with anything here. just want to make that perfectly clear. Well, I mean, either you've got claims and you've made tests or you don't have any claims and we don't really need to... No, either you come in and either you admit you're changing the subject or you continue with what we were talking about, space, time, fabric thereof. Do you have anything to say about that? 
first of all, and then we can continue with something else. And, uh, Bacon have given great demonstration of how it, you could make a hypothesis and test it um, and uh, give, it, give it support with um, prediction and observation. Absolutely not. They just gave an observation, a prediction, and a picture. Right, which is more than you've done at this point, I think. So that's what you came in to say? Yeah, to demonstrate. So no input of your own. What's your, what's your uh, input on this? To demonstrate that you're inconsistent with how you apply these rules about what is and isn't. Determined. Right, so you came in with absolutely nothing. You just came in to uh, personally challenge me. Got it. Quite nice try, buddy. So, what's your take on it, uh, sir? Uh, I think they're they're standard and they're coming up with hypotheses. Testing them is better than yours. Oh, so it's better than mine again. But you have absolutely nothing to add to the conversation. Except really affecting me. Really so you have right, nothing I mean, there. An attack, just you just came in to attack me. To, to invite you to to demonstrate whether you stick to the same burden. Then I mean, I guess. And I, I told you I do. Yes. yes. And I told you I do. Yes. I told you I do. Yes. Thank you. And then I asked you, what's your opinion on this? Do you have one? But you're not. But you're not willing to demonstrate that you do. So you have no opinion. Fair. Thank you very much. You can sit down now. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your time. Anytime. Don't try to play games with me. I mean, from what I heard there writing, I mean, you know, he was at, we were talking about specific actual experimentation to validate what was being said. And of course, that wasn't really provided other than um, an explanation and a picture. Like he said, there wasn't really anything mm -hmm. tangible or concrete. And so I feel like SC was kind of holding that to trial, you know, holding the feet to the fire in terms of that. And then, and I'm not trying to kind of jump on you, but it's kind of like you, you just kind of came in and just sort of obfuscated from that point and then tried to ask him for proof of something so, different. But, so but let he, me make he, the point very he, clear then. Let me, let me just finish to say that he wasn't making any claims. There wasn't anything that was even... And and you kind of obfuscated from the main point to That's try to, point. yeah. That's the point though, to, to to say these people make a novel prediction that tests the theory of space of space time, and they find what they're expecting to find at roughly the right time in the right area of the sky. That that is quite a high burden to me to say I looked over a lake and I saw too far, without doing, meeting any of the same burdens for verification and. Uh, like it's just it's just laughable like if you're not sticking to the same standard is the point that i'm making to interrogate somebody and challenge them and then throw out everything they're saying is it's oh that's nothing when you can't meet the same standard is it's just hypocritical and laughable well, how can you make that accusation when i didn't make a claim I wasn't making a exactly. claim that's 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 an even that's even more of the point which is you will avoid making a claim so that you don't have to meet the burden why didn't you just ask me instead of accusing me? You could have just asked me a question, I've dude. I invited you multiple times. I invited you multiple. Do you have any observations or hypotheses that you've tested in such a way that meet the same standard you're setting for the space-time observation? You didn't say that. You you came in like a like. I'm asking Alan. you now. Do you have any? Yes, I do. Right. I have a water. Sure, I'll, I'll be more than glad to uh, to tell you. I have a water observation, which I did myself, and I came to the conclusion that water does not curve at three miles like you people say, like your model says. There How you go. Did you test it? How did I test did it? Test I didn't it? test it. I had an observation. <laughs> I made an observation. Okay. So, so you didn't test it? I didn't say I had a test. So, so you don't did test I say your I had a test? So so did I how, say how, I had a test? Oh, how did you? You, you said three miles, right? Excuse me. You said uh, three miles of water that doesn't curve. Is that I what don't you, say that. You have... Your 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 claim says that your fantasy ball. No, sphere I'm trying. 
you just you just said you have an observation. I'm trying to understand what observation that is. Yes, I made an observation. I was eight feet from the water. I had my P900, and I was looking over a river, very calm. And there was about I would I would say about ten, a good eleven miles of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were you looking right. downstream now, or upstream, or across the across it? It was so across. It, it was more. Like, it was more like cross, but it was pretty calm. I have it on my uh, on my Little? YouTube, th thirteen mile bridge. You asked me for what something, variable? I gave it to you. Now going back so, to so uh, what, what variables did your observation control for? I didn't control, control any control. variables. I made an observation. I made an observation. On a lake, you didn't really test in re listen saying. up, let me finish. In reality, I was on the ground, above water, on earth, looking across a river. I wasn't hypothesizing about time and space bending in a fabric. Do you That's see the question. difference? The question I asked Do you, you see is the what, difference what? here? The question I asked was pretty clear. It wasn't whether you did this in reality. It was about what what variables did you control for and how did you control for them? And your answer sounded like it was none. What variables do you wish that I controlled? Like what? Well, I mean, if it's a reasonable observation, I, I would just imagine you'd already done it. Any of the variables. What? Like what? Control. Give me an example. Like what would you have controlled? Go ahead. Uh, well, whether, whether your lens is rectilinear or is going to warp things. B900. 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 I don't know, I don't know. So I didn't ask what, what camera was it. I was asking for what were the variables that you controlled for. Is that what you would have done? When you go the take answer, a picture on a river, do you, do, you, do you measure your lens? Have you ever measured your lens on your camera? What lens do you have on your camera? If I'm trying to determine something, you know, if I'm trying to make an uh, accurate observation, I would, sure. Really? When was the last time you measured your lens on your camera? Oh, I haven't. I haven't claimed that I've taken dude, something. With dude, my... listen to me. Listen to me. Your games, so you, you your didn't sophistry, control for your sophistry. About, you for a your sophistry ain't gonna work on me, dude. Do you understand? Now, tell me about the space-time fabric. What's your opinion on it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Did you control for? Did you control for a fraction? How did you control? How did you uh, test for the space-time fabric? Please give me your explanation, detailed. I want detailed explanation. So you didn't control for a fraction. So you didn't, you don't know nothing about the space-time fabric. You just came in to, uh, to muddle the waters, to you, do your sophistry. Ask if you stick to the same standards. So you know nothing, people. right? And it you, sounds you, like we've adequately demonstrated that you don't. So you absolutely know nothing about space-time fabric. You just came in to talk about a lens. Space -time right? fabric or the curvature of water? A lens? Yeah, you want to claims. talk about a lens? I wasn't making any claims. I was testing if you were consistent with how you apply them. And it sounds like you said, I went and I took a photo, which is what they did of the stars. You controlled for no variables, which they didn't. They did control for the variables. So their observation is better than yours. But you really? Still you down and hold yours up. So, so, you are so let me get this straight, sir. Apply this. Right. Let me get this straight now. You're saying that my observation in reality here on Earth and your conjecture of a space-time fabric somehow coincide in your brain? Uh, no, no, I'm saying they don't. I'm saying that the, the test of the space-time was stronger than you. There was no test. The the, there was no test. There well, was no test because we established... We hold on, don't you interrupt me. Don't interrupt me. Don't interrupt me while oh, I'm we're talking. Gonna, we're gonna there was that? no okay, test. Good. Don't interrupt me. There was no test because we established they made an observa a prediction, an observation, and they just took a picture. So where is the test there? It's what you did. They're testing the You're prediction. Never about mind what, never mind what I insane. did. Where is the test in that observation? Go ahead. Tell me. They tested the prediction. So there I was no test. The there was no test there. What do you mean? I just answered. <laughs> no. Where, where was the... Where, where, no, you didn't. You just said there was a test of the prediction. Where was the test? What do you mean, where? On Earth? It's because you make a prediction and then something Picture? happens, does it? Just because you make a prediction and then something happens that matches it, doesn't mean that that's, an, that's not an experiment or a test or anything. 
Yeah, it is a test because no, you just have a match. picture. No, you well, just it, have a picture. It, it, it is yeah. a test because it is a test because if it doesn't match the prediction, you can rule out that hypothesis. Exactly. It's false. No, absolutely, like not. Main, absolutely, main absolutely not. You have absolutely not. Let me tell you what you got. You got a you got a hypothesis. You looked at something and you took a picture of it. That's all you got. No, now, you, whatever you, you say after you that, that listen up, listen up. Let me, I'm not point. finished. I'm not finished. Whatever you, you say after that point. is just words. Yeah, okay. the, the prediction so is not that right. That's different. The part. What, in what way is that different from you going and taking a photo of water? I never said I did a it. test. That's the difference. Nice try. It's never said I did a test. You made a claim. Did, no, I did not. No, absolutely not. You asked me what I did, and I told you I took a picture on a river. Now, how does that compare to you making, not even you, you heard somebody else make a, uh, an idea, then take a picture of it and call it a test? How does that compare to what I did myself to you hearing a story about somebody else? Please go ahead. How does it compare? Well, I'd say one um, is making a prediction and testing that prediction in a way that is falsifiable. And I would say the way you did it was you just went and took a photo and then made up some words afterwards. And so yours doesn't meet anything close to the standard that the one you were criticizing sets, which is why I think it is an apt demonstration of the fact that you do not live up to your own standards that you set for others. You're delusional. <laughs> I didn't make any standards. Let me, let me rebut that. You are solely delusional. You're equating of a story you heard of somebody that made a hypothesis, observed something, took a picture and called it a test. I, on the other hand, just told you that I made an observation on a river. Nice try. You're saying they took a picture as if it was disconnected from the hypothesis. It's not like they made a claim and took a picture. No, they, no, they I... created a hypothesis and their hypothesis have implications. And one of those implications is that they can predict supernovas. So they try to test that implication and it matched. So it's not no, that they absolutely, just took a picture. Absolutely incorrect, sir. Hypothesis, picture does not equate a test. Nice try. Ain't gonna so happen, ain't skip, gonna work, no matter what you say, you is not gonna part, change of that. Course. Of course, if you, if you ignore the prediction part, then yeah, it doesn't sound like a test. The no, prediction part is irrelevant. If you have a, if I see a clock on a wall, and I make a prediction that oh, I predict that the big hand's gonna land on the twelve in thirty minutes, and I'm predicting that invisible unicorns did it, and then I look and it happened, my prediction came true. Doesn't mean sure. invisible fucking unicorns made the clock hand move. Sure, but you could predict that before you mention you invisible unicorns. Like you, invisible unicorns were not required to make that prediction. They didn't add to anything. Which is sort of very different. That's why the what, clock hand moves. That's why the clock very, hand moves. Invisible unicorns. Yeah, but before Prove before it you mentioned before you mentioned invisible unicorns, we already knew the clock's rotating and how fast it's rotating. No, I saw it too. I saw the unicorn too. <laughs> what, now you got two relevant? two two eyewitness testimony. Unicorn made the clock move. Prove us wrong. Make a prediction. Well, how is that even, how is that even when, analogous to what we're saying? When you just speak, it's analogous because when you just make a prediction and then look at something, that doesn't mean that just because your prediction came true, whatever you think's happening is happening. That just means you were able to predict. I agree. It. I agree. Yeah, not an experiment. But that's not just, yeah, but the, you're just summarizing and ignoring some parts of this prediction. It's not just no. any prediction. It's not just like, I'm going to assume something, and I'm going to tell that's it's the prediction. It's a science fiction it. prediction, I'll tell you that. This isn't a, sci this isn't a hypothesis, can I, can this is a science prediction. So it's not that you're making a hypothesis and you're creating a prediction out of nowhere, and the prediction is disconnected from the hypothesis. If your prediction is, doesn't come from your hypothesis, you're not testing your hypothesis. So the prediction that uh, it's going to land at, at, at 12 o'clock, when it's 12 o'clock, it doesn't come from invisible unicorns because that's known before your hypothesis of No, it's not. Unicorns. You're just jabbering away. How did you test that what you predicted was the cause? How did you test that? Mm, you don't. I'm not saying that exactly. we can do that. Exactly. So you don't have a test. Do you understand? Yes, is you that, have. How hard is that for you to understand, man? Yeah, well, the test doesn't have to prove the hypothesis. I'm not saying it's you guys the hypothesis. Really 
Is this for the supernova thing? Yeah. Yeah, I guess okay, everything. Okay, so what? So, so what? what uh, the observation is like, what in the sky are you observing? Just in general, it's lights in the sky, right? Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, one of the things they claim to do is to predict these things, and. I can understand the idea that if they are predicted and then they have a model that predicts that it can convince some of these people uh, that, 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 that they actually did make that prediction. But there's actually could be something deeper going on that these uh, controller people have actually hijacked a lot of the ancient knowledge of how the sky works to where um, just like the way eclipses happen on a certain cycle and certain conjunctions happen. Oh, so yeah, they're stuff. not predicting, bro. They're not predicting brand new supernovas out of nowhere. They're predicting the repeat supernovas, man. That's all they can well, do. Now that they've observed them, yeah. they had no explanation yeah. at all yeah, for them. If, they thought, that, if, they thought when a star went supernova, that it first, it first expanded into a a red, you know, a red, red dwarf and a, a fucking super giant, and then it and, uh, yeah, imploded yeah, and went supernova yeah. and was gone in the stardust. But then they noticed yeah, that some of the supernovas uh, would or uh, repeating. So that's what they're right, predicting. The repeat because they've, they've observed them already. Right, we get a point. Right, that's but that's kind of that's kind of what I'm me, that's kind of what I'm saying me. though is that these things are on if they're on a cycle just like eclipses are, and if they're aware of what that cycle is, it can look like they're predicting them with their model, but they're not. They're just yeah, they're just sure, aware sure. of that. Like I, I agree with you. I agree. With you. If if those are cycles, then yeah, the prediction wouldn't wouldn't make any any give any credit to the hypothesis. I agree with you. But I'm not sure if that's the case. I, mean, I wasn't the one who brought that, that experiment up. It was cool. They don't even have to be cycles. I'll give you another uh, scenario, right? You have a powerful telescope. You look, you're looking at the sky for years, right? You notice things. Now, I've been doing it with my camera, and you notice that certain things happen. Like, you know, when the moon will rise, you know Saturn's going to be in front of it, and so on and so forth. So as they look up, they see patterns. Now. Forget about the patterns. They can also see two lights and, you know, night after night, as they take pictures, they, they'll see those lights getting closer and closer together. So after a while, they see a couple of them. Once they merge, boom, you see a big light. They call it a supernova. It's as simple it's, as that. So no you, Einstein, you supernova, no space warp, no nothing needed no, here. Supernovas, supernovas aren't like a merging of stars. That's, uh, that's not when they happen. Uh, but I mean, if that's the case, if it it was already predictable without the hypothesis, then I'm agreeing with you. But if that's not the case, then that gives credit to the hypothesis. For example, if supernovas are something like sort of random, for example, uh, there is a star in that if it explodes, uh, it's it, it can direct its uh, those, those uh, gamma rays towards the solar system because it's sort of rotating in, in, towards our direction and the, ex the expectancy for the star to explode is like in a range of thousands of years or hundreds of thousands of years that that's the sort of prediction we usually make for how when supernovas are going to happen but that prediction according to Koshu gives you a it was off like by a day or some hours that that's not that's not something we were able to do and if we were, then I would agree with you. And if we are not, that gives credit to the hypothesis. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, but look, they can observe a star getting uh, pulsating or behaving in a certain way just before it explodes. Sorry? You, you get what I'm saying? It doesn't have to have to do anything with Einstein. It could just be merely observational. That's what I'm trying so, to... Yeah, both, point both, both yours to... and Jero's point... Are valid, which perhaps, like Jero seems to be, perhaps these controllers have ancient knowledge or something of perhaps even a foretold events. He didn't go into it. You, you could say maybe these supernovas pulsate or give away some telltale sign that they're about to erupt. Is the suggestion then that they know that, that they haven't shared that information? So they've gone, what we've actually discovered is how to predict a supernova explosion, but what we're going to pretend we've done is a different thing. Is that your suggestion? Possibly, yeah. Sure. So it's not, not really about so the question the question isn't really about whether it, whether you test the phenomenon. It's about whether they're lying. Because if because if we say that they could be lying about the core issues, it doesn't matter how they claim they tested it, because you you're calling them liars from the start anyway. 
Okay, why don't you explain to us what the claim is on how they test them, please? Go ahead. At least my understanding of it is they know there's a supernova coming because they've already seen it, but they're predicting to see it elsewhere because of a lensing event that causes it to slow down so they can predict they can see it somewhere slightly differently at a later time. So there you go. It's a lensing, it's a lensing event that, that picks them off to what's going to happen. Yeah, but so the exactly lensing, what I said. But, but the lensing is the hypothesis. The hypothesis is that uh, gravity can lens. Right. Light it's, that, it's their story. Exactly what I said, guys. For the love it's of God, man. Yeah, so what, what you're not getting hypothesis. is you're, saying this, you're seeing the same event twice. It's like you're seeing a car crash and then you're seeing the same car crash happen. And it's, no, and it's going no. Well. If, you have an, if you have a hypothesis... Please understand what I'm saying. Uh, Give me one second, what it is? Jeremy. I'll show before... Hang on, just before we go, go ahead, down this think. rabbit hole, because that, that was my misunderstand... could be my misunderstanding of it. Is that right, Kosho? He's not here. Oh. He left. You uh, see, you don't even know. So I'm not going to hold you to the same standards where you were trying to bur bury me before. I am not that kind of guy. So... My, my, my thing is this, it's an observational, some observational phenomena gives it off. And then you said that it's a lensing effect, right? It has nothing to do with Einstein, nothing to do with predictions or time warping or anything. It's it does, merely an observational. What causes, what causes lensing? Who knows? It doesn't matter. Yeah, but we why, didn't know there was a lensing. Why are you changing there? the subject? That's not, that is the subject, that is the subject, because if no, there's a moment... that is not the subject, it's the cause and effect. You, no, no, you no. guys are master uh, sophists, man. You're not getting it. You're not like it. You know what, I'm going to drop out of this conversation because I'm going to start insulting you guys. I think I proved my point, so I, I'm, I'm going to just listen that you're from not now on. You guys are sophists. You are not Central to honest. the point is you about not where honest. the gravity... Gravity lenses things, and you're saying lensing is, is irrelevant. Lensing is the fundamental topic. That, that is the prediction. About. The prediction is that yeah. there's an amount of mass there. So if a supernova happens there, it's going to be lensed by that amount of mass. You That's do not, not have it. honest discourse of conversation. I cannot have, I cannot have a, a common... Sorry if you're not able to follow the conversation. Follow? Follow? Dude, you can't tie your shoelaces. Please. Well, well let, me, let me just ask, uh, just so we can figure out where you're coming from se what what did you feel like that they said that was in that uh like dishonest or that wasn't um lining up in your mind just so i can understand it yeah they go around in circles i told them that it has nothing to, it, it, i can give them an alternative explanation instead of their time dilation mumbo jumbo from einstein and i told them it could merely be an observational as something observational that they see that's happened before and they can predict it in the future. And they said, no, no, it's this and that. And then they told me, uh, lensing. So isn't that exactly an effect of what I just said? The lensing is the hypothesis. Well, yeah, I, well, I, I would agree. I would agree. I mean, they, they do this with a lot of things. They observe an effect. They do it with the Foucault pendulum. They do it with um uh the even Eratosthenes to some degree they do um what else the uh cavendish yeah pretty much all a lot of these things they're observing effects but then they're applying a model to it an assumptive model and then saying that the effect is proving the model and therefore the model is correct yeah, yeah. Oh, that pisses yeah. me off yeah oh, that's just false the the Foucault's pendulum didn't come. I mean, the, the the Coriolis effect didn't come after the after the pendulum. That that notion that pendulum should process if the Earth's rotating came before the experiment. And you can use Newtonian mechanics to get the formula for how how much per, uh, pendulums should process. So that is direct. Well, really, yeah, but to me. It to me, it doesn't really matter how fancy the explanation is. No, no, it, it's not still, the, the logic needs to be it's in line. Like the actual yes. logic of what's happening needs to be in in proper alignment. Exactly. It doesn't really matter it how is. fancy or, or you know it, people's and, names like Newton are attached to it or any of that. And it is exactly. It, it has to make and sense to you because uh, the the procession of pendulums are direct uh, direct implications of Newtonian mechanics. So if Newtonian mechanics is true, which is part of the model, 
then in the Earth is rotating, then according to Newtonian mechanics, pendulums should process. That is not something that is dependent upon the observation. If you if you haven't if you if you teach Newtonian mechanics to a high school uh, student and ask and don't tell them Coriolis, don't tell them a whole full coast pendulum, and ask them well how much would a pendulum process given a certain latitude? They can work out the precession of your pendulum even before doing any experiment. Right. No, I, I understand that. I mean, I don't know if we want to take the topic into a whole full coast pendulum. I didn't bring it up to. I mean, we could if we want, but I. But the but even with what you just said right there, you're still using an assumptive model to claim why that's happening. For example, I could do the opposite. I could come up with a really fancy model about, I guess everybody loves unicorns, so I'll say unicorns, about how invisible unicorns are making the pendulum precess like that. So I, I, my, my whole model, let's say, is that the earth is stationary, that these unicorns are, are causing that. And then I could I could build all kinds of models around that. And then I could use the precession to quote unquote, prove that it's the unicorns and then push that as propaganda. And yeah. essentially that's exactly. what. Exactly yes. what you're yes. doing, uh, but you well, don't see no, it. No, it's uh, not, you're just not seeing it. Uh, you're not I mean, seeing it, bro. Dude, Honestly, you're, not, you're doing exactly uh, what, what Gio if, just if you, tell, if you tell someone uh, invisible unicorns exist, and ask them to predict the precession of pendulums without um, anything else, they're not going to be able to use uh, the fact that uh, invisible unicorns exist to get to formulas for precession of pendulums. Okay, but if you fair teach enough. Them, wait, 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 let me, let me finish. If you, if you teach them Newtonian mechanics, you don't have to mention Coriolis, you don't have to mention pendulums, you don't have to mention anything. If you just give them the, the, the fundamental laws of, of Newtonian mechanics, they can work out how pendulums go. So that's not analogous because the precession of the pendulum is, uh, it must be uh, within Newtonian mechanics. It's not something we added later. It's something that is already built from the, from the initial, like from the bit more, most basic laws. There's no getting away from it. Well, th those yeah, are just I, I also think to add to that, Cheers, cheers perfectly right if you can come up with any explanation for a phenomena um and then test it and if you test it incorrectly you could come to the wrong conclusion the, the question would just be whether you're going to be taken seriously and if your if your explanation is unicorns and you don't have anything else suggesting that unicorns exist and you do have other things in the body of evidence of, of, of science and observation that suggests that there is there is an, a, an effect of the earth spinning and you call the cause unicorns and don't control for the fact that maybe it's the earth spinning you, you still could reach that conclusion and tell people that but just nobody's going to take you seriously yeah well yeah, we, have you're unicorn, assuming we have the hold on you're... see we have we have the unicorns moving cavendish too and they do other stuff <laughs> they, these unicorns are busy busy very right. busy yeah sure you could do that and if you want to be taken seriously you, you can you can crack on with it i, I just don't think you will we got all kinds of math for yeah, how, how big Jeremy, the unicorns are, how much they that? eat. But they're I think assuming the spinning of the earth here. No, the, just, the, as the fact, just, just as a matter of no, fact. No, I'm not assuming the spinning of the earth. What I'm saying is there is a theory out there that the earth is spinning that would adequately explain this phenomena. Just the same as I could say a unicorn is pushing this boat along the ocean. If there is an established theory that wind is doing it, it makes sense. Only if you want to be taken seriously that you control for wind. And you said, we did this in an area where we've confirmed there was no wind, but our unicorn meter was high and the boat still moved. Then you okay. might start getting taken seriously. But if I have a question for you. Can I rebut that? People, it, uh, once I'm done, if that's okay. If you're yeah, not sure. controlling for variables that other people assert do exist, you're just not going to get taken seriously. Okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll accept what you said there. Doesn't mean I agree with it, but I'll accept it and I'll run with it. Now, I ask you this. You're saying that the rotation of the earth causes the pendulum to process, correct? And then I have a following question after that. I, I would say it's a prob more probable cause, yes, than unicorns. Okay, then would it be a safe assumption to say then, if I was to hang a pendulum plumb, that it would cause it to move? No. No, it wouldn't. I hear a no? No, it wouldn't. So in, in my scenario, the pendulum hangs perfectly plumb, no movement, the rotation of the earth does not affect it in any single way, 
But in your scenario, it causes I perception, it correct? In any single, I, didn't say that, I didn't say it doesn't affect it in any single way. I just wouldn't accept, expect it to process. That wouldn't be the way I would expect it to. I to didn't ask it. you if it's processing. I asked you if it would move, sir. No, it and the answer move. Is no. that doesn't mean nothing's affecting yeah, it. Yeah, that, that that's not a prediction from your tonal mechanics. You cannot get from your tonal mechanics to plums would move in a rotating earth. But you can get from your tonal mechanics that a plum bob moving would cause precession. Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. So there's Once motion in moving, one yes. and no motion in the other. Really? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Well done. Yeah. Because yeah, the wow. precession yeah, the precession would uh, be there if you're changing the, the your speed of rotation. So you don't see why I get mad at you guys and I call you sophists and uh Well, you're just failing You don't to see the the fallacy. No, that's not a fallacy. You, you're, you, just, you're just if failing you were able to, to reply to the mechanics. Yeah, if you were able to repeat the things we said to, to match them accurately and then show why they're wrong, it would make more sense that you get frustrated. But it seems that when you attempt to, to, to repeat to us what we're saying, you get it vastly wrong. And then it seems like the frustration of not getting what we're saying is causing you to think that we're wrong when it could, in fact, possibly be you. No, sir, you're double speaking. I was very clear in my wordage, and I'll try it again. We have a hanging pendulum. I'm not, I'm not unaware of the test, but what I mean is... Is the what earth I mean is, causing it movement? When, yes or no? Right, but when last time when you asked me that not question, right, I not said right. no. no. Not, hey, it's a no, SE, right? I thought you, SE, please, let's not interrupt one another. Last time you asked me that question, you said, does it make it move? I said no. The next thing you said is, so what you're saying, it doesn't affect it in any way. That's clearly not what I said. If, if, okay, if, the, okay, if, my if bad. When, which way? Did, let me finish this go from one statement from something I said to something that doesn't mean the same thing and you don't understand why those two things are important and, diff and different, you're not understanding. My bad, I apologize. I apologize. Now, let no, me no, rephrase no, no. the I, question. Sorry, I'm, not I'm not complaining. I'm not being upset about you uh, strawmanning me. I'm, I'm suggesting this is evidence of you not understanding. I am not strawmanning me. Don't put words in my mouth. Let me rephrase the question. In what way does the oh, spinning just... motion... Stop interrupting me, dude. I told you, don't play games with me. It ain't going to work. Now, in what way does the earth affect a hanging pendulum? Please go ahead. I don't want to put words in your mouth. A stationary hanging pendulum. In what way does it affect it? Well, for one, um, centrifugal force will be somewhat affecting its weight without affecting its mass. Its movement. Okay. I'm talking about its movement specifically. Okay, so you meant one in motion or one in, at rest? At rest. A pendulum at rest, hanging there for yeah. hours. In what way will the, will the earth affect its motion? Won't affect its motion. You said, this is the thing, you keep switching. You said, in what way will the earth's uh, rotation affect it? And then the next question you thought I was answering was its motion. You're not able to speak clearly enough that... Demonstrating well, understanding. See what he's trying to do. If if I you were got, in front of me, I'd smack he, you, bro. I would right. smack you. Well, I swear well, to God, I would smack happen, your man. face. I go silly. I, go right, well, we'll love I that. swear we'll to love God, that. and whatever would happen that, after would happen. That yeah. Did sound, yeah, that sounded yeah, like this, some pedantic dissecting right there. That didn't. Uh, yeah, writing. I mean, that was. Just to make everything clear. Just to make everything clear. If if. If you have a static, if you have a plum at rest, then the rotation of the Earth shouldn't uh, create any movement on that plum. If you have a okay, a at least, thing, at least Bacon, should... yeah, Bacon Thank is you. able to actually re respond yeah. to but, it. Yeah, Bacon but, it, it, yeah. actually so, did answer that before. Now it was just a bit more more confusing the way he asked it, but I think that's just it. The, the, yeah, the simple distinction is. If you're asking a question about what way does it affect it or what way does it affect its movement, you are asking two different questions, which will get you two different answers. Don't be confused or upset when those answers aren't the same, when they're different That's questions. why I clarified, you schmuck. I clarified. Now answer the question. Sure. We did. I'll make the question clear and I'll answer well, well, let's, 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 Just this basic idea. If you have a hanging plumb line, like a, essentially a pendulum that's not moving and mm -hmm. it's completely still and at rest, and then you you know swing it so you get it swinging five feet to the left to the right and all of a sudden it's doing this very minor procession just on a very basic concept of, of physics it, 
how does that make sense to you? Meaning that this whole earth is supposed to be spinning at all these speeds the atmosphere is clung along with it. So we don't experience it or we can't, you, we can't observe it in any way, shape or form. However, there's just this pendulum that if you swing, you have to swing it back and forth, you know, five feet to the left, five feet to the right in order to get this very minor procession. And that now is somehow the reading of this earth that's going thousands of miles an hour in all these different directions. But if the, if, but if the line is just plumb and just sitting there, it doesn't affect it. How in your mind are you, are you coming to terms with that? Thank oh, you, you for the to, love of God, Gio. Just, Thank you. You just have to apply Newtonian mechanics. All, all of those questions are going to have a clear answer if you try oh, to. Shit. How? Answer them. Go ahead. Give us the answer. Please. All right. All right. Uh, so, so if you have a hanging plum uh, and the Earth is already rotating, so it didn't start with the Earth stationary and then the Earth started spinning. It, it was already spinning from since the, the plum is rest. Then all of the all of the forces on that plum are in equilibrium. There there is no there is no net force that might gonna cause any movement. So you have. And how does that differ from the swinging one? Wasn't the Earth already spinning? Uh, the swinging one Isn't is going. Isn't it the same? No, the the swing the swinging the swinging one is going through different lines of uh, latitude. And as, yeah, so as it goes, let's say it's swinging as uh, north and south. Let's say, so when it's when it's going uh, when it's going north, now it's more to the north. When it's going south, it's more to the south. And there's a difference if the Earth this introduces rotating, a whole new problem. Uh, I'm going to get there. Yeah, I'm pretty right. sure you're going to mention the Otto's effect, right? In both yeah. cases, bacon. In both cases, the pendulum is still attached to the Earth. Yeah, and it's still attached to the Earth. Let me get there. Let me get there. Yeah, so as the pendulums go north, let's say you're in the northern hemisphere. So when it's more north, uh, the spin of the Earth at that position it has a smaller circumference, right? When it goes to the south, it has a bigger circumference, right? And when it's right below the hanging, the hanging point, it has this uh, medium circumference. So as the pendulum uh, goes from one circumference to the other, to, in order for it to keep up with the hanging point, it would have to accelerate uh, east when it's going south and deaccelerate when it's going north. And of course, if there's nothing, there, there's no person doing that, then the pendulum is not going to keep up with the, the hanging point. So as it, go, as it goes north, is, is going to tilt to east, and when it goes south, it's going to tilt west. So that is going to cause a precession. Now, if you are now when it's going, when it's swinging, let's say east to west, so it's no longer changing lines of latitude. Uh, when it's going east, it's going with the rotation of the Earth. When it's going west, it's going against the rotation of the Earth. So in one scenario, you have a, um, a centrifugal force increasing, and the other will, you want to, the other direction you have it decreasing. And if you try to, if you see the direction of the centrifugal force, it doesn't point upwards. It points to uh, away from the rotation of the Earth. So it points in a way aligned to the equator. So that's still going to create a torque because it's uh, because it's it's, it's pointing uh, away from the line that it's swinging. So it doesn't matter how the orientation. You're always going to have this clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, Procession, depending on what which hemisphere you, you're in. I have another That's way the... to explain to, to explain a similar kind of effect, if it might help. Sure. Like it's it, so. Let's say you've got an ice skater, and she's standing at rest, and she extends her arms. Do we expect her to start moving, rotating about her, changing, changing? I don't. We don't do it. But if That's she's already standing. So let me let me finish it, please. If she's already spinning and she extends her arms, she'll slow down her rotation. And if she's already spinning and she brings her arms in, she'll speed up her rotation. So you've got the same thing where the effect of the rotation and that latitude, the distance out her arms are, seem to have an effect when in motion, but not when stopped. Does that help? No, because the Earth is spinning in both instances. It's not the same here. Right. I'm just trying to point out why 
movement, like a back and forward uh, movement will make a difference to the effect you see when sitting still plum won't. Oh, you no, can... Yeah, but the, the equivalent to that... The, the equivalent... Hold on, Bacon, real quick. The equivalent to that, though, is that she would have to be on a spinning ice rink. So she first has to be on a spinning ice rink that's whirling around for that to, for that to yes. correlate. Because you made, a, you made a correlation where she's stationary and then mm -hmm. she's moving. Those are two different things. So that's Mine's not really. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to bring. I'm not trying to bring the globe into it. What I'm trying to um, point out is that um, that the effect of the rotation will affect the move. Like the sorry, the, the movement you see will be dependent on whether you're rotating or not, or moving or not. And if we can see that in one place with a with an ice skater, ignoring the rotation of the Earth, just going oh it seems like moving the mass further out changes the nature of this rotation, but only if you're already rotating. No, it's not the same. You're saying that the skater is stationed. As Gio pointed out to you, it's already rotating in, in both scenarios. You understand? I can't get it. I, 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 get, I get the but I think the objection comes from I'm not understanding the point I was making. Let, let me Sorry, give a different scenario. I mean, j just put a a plum on a rotating platform. Uh, if you swing the plum, you're going to have a pendulum that is processing, of course, because the platform is rotating. But at some point, that pendulum is going to get at rest, even though the platform is rotating. If it's rotating in a constant speed, is now in a constant rotation speed, at some point that pendulum is also going to stop uh, swinging. And at that point, it would be at rest, and it's on a rotating platform. But when you sing it, the the swing is going to process on the surface. So yeah, there you go. I mean, how are yeah. you? You're saying you have a spinning oh, platform that you can show a pendulum that's not moving. Where, where, where's that? Is that what you said? Is that what he said? I think so. Yeah, plum. Yeah, you of have, course. Uh, you have an example of that. I'd love you have an to example see that. Of, uh, oh, I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't a pendulum that's can find it. The thing is, that, in both of these scenarios, the, the pendulum is connected. It's still connected to the earth, meaning that, you know, if it's hanging in a building or whatever, the building is connected to the earth. So you're telling me that you have a platform that can spin and a pendulum will be stationary and then you move it and it starts processing? Because that was the other thing I was going to ask you. Exactly. Do you, do you yeah, have exactly. Any, any, any representation of this on a small scale? Uh, I have of the pendulum processing. I'm not sure if I have. I can find any video of, of plums in rotating platforms, but I can try. No, because we all know what will happen if if you put a hanging pendulum on anything that's moving. The pendulum's going to move. We all know that. Absolutely. No, it, it, it it's going to reach a that. state where it's at equilibrium. Yeah, it's only going to do that when, you, like, let's say, let's say the platform is no, it's not moving. So you put a plum there, the plum is at rest, the platform is not moving. If you now rotate the platform, of course, that's going to create a movement on the plum. It's going to turn that into a pendulum because of the inertia of, of the weight. Uh, but it's not going to swing forever. At some point, it's going to get at rest, even with the platform still rotating. And it's if going to be rotating, plumb while the the, the platform no, is rotating. It's going to be, no, it's going to be tilted uh, away from the. Well, uh, that's what we're saying, Bacon. Yeah, Try to keep it, up, bro. Yeah, but the the plums being tilted are not the problem here because you said that they don't move when they're at rest. But that that's our question. The answer is no. But if you're asking if they are tilted, then the answer the answer is yes, they are tilted. Well, yeah, obviously. So how does it? How does your thing work then? How does? How do you? How do you uh, square a circle? If the Earth is rotating, right, and mm -hmm. you agree that a pendulum can hang plumb here on Earth, right? If we hang it, but mm -hmm. then you also say that that same motion is causing the precession of the other pendulum. Yeah, don't want to. How is that possible? Because when you, when it's at rest, there's no there is no mechanism to make it swing if it's at rest. But if What's it's at swinging, rest? What's at rest? Isn't your earth plum. constantly spinning? Yes, I mean at rest with the surface. That's that's what I'm saying, of course. Like at if rest you have with a plum, the surface. Yes, if it's uh, if from from the point of view of someone on the surface, 
the, the plum is at rest, there is no mechanism, even with the earth spinning, to make that plum start moving. I think you just entered a paradox there, sir. Because before oh, you said it? when the platform is spinning, the plumb bob is always tilting. Now you're saying it's no, not it's, on the no, earth. It's tilted, but not moving. Like it's tilted and at rest. It would be at rest tilted. Have you ever seen a tilted plumb bob? Have you ever, have you ever owned a plumb bob? Have you ever used a plumb bob? Well, not in exactly a plumb bob, but it, it, you can do that with other objects. Uh, for example, have you ever seen a tilted plumb bob, like you said, on your spinning platform? Oh, well, tilted uh, in respect to what? Because that the tilt of the plumb bob is in not just to vertical. That that is vertical, because if if the plumb if the plumb bob is tilted because of centrifugal force, that centrifugal force affects the direction of down. So this is still going to be vertical. That's your new vertical. So the tilt is making it plumb. Do you realize what you're saying, dude? No, the spin I'm saying... of the earth is making something plumb. That's what you just said. No, I'm not saying it's making something plumb. Uh, plumb is just when it's uh, uh, pointing to whatever gravity is pointing, right? So if you have centrifugal force, which is going to make the plums tilt a bit towards the equator, that's not going to affect just plums, it's going to affect everything. It's going to affect the water, it's going to affect you, it's going to affect buildings. So that's your new, th this tilt is your new vertical. That is what you're going to perceive as vertical, because that's your upward vector now. Bro, do you listen to yourself when you talk? Seriously. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I can draw if, if that makes it easier. Yeah, please, yeah. Would love to right. see that. The tilting vertical. The plumb bob that hangs, not plumb. Yeah, it's tilted if you compare it to a non-rotating Earth. It's still vertical. Like if you compare rotating with a non-rotating, uh, if you're not at the equator or at the poles, they'll be, the rotating ones are going to have uh, plums more tilted towards the equator. Uh, and the, yeah, so it's in comparison between those two Earths, I'd say. But you're still going to perceive that as upwards because your perception of up comes from your local gravity, which is affected by centrifugal force. So, so let me get this straight now. If, if I have a pendulum that, let's say I have a pendulum that's up, I have a pendulum up north in Canada, and I have one at the equator, right? Mm -hmm. in, in, your, in your mythical spinning thing, are they both tilted? Mm, they don't point to the same direction. Like the one at the equator points to the center of the Earth. The one in Canada doesn't. It points more towards the equator. Yet they're still plumb. Yes. That's, that's wow. the definition of plumb. It's the downward, your downward, uh, where the, your downward force points to. And that's affected by the spin of the Earth. I don't, know, I don't know what else to tell you, bro. I mean... I, I'm, I'm almost at a loss of words here. So you're saying well, the one that's in Canada is pointing to the equator and the one in the equator is pointing towards no, the no, center no. of the uh, earth, you said. Yes, let me, let me share my screen. So I can draw while I'm speaking. I think I explain myself better like this. So if we have an observer here, let me pick a different color. We have an observer here. His plumb line just points to the center of the Earth. So if he hangs a plumb, the plumb here is going to be aligned with the center of the Earth. If you're here in Canada, uh, let's say this latitude, I'm not sure which latitude, I think it's 50 something, right? Uh, this is the direction of the, to the center of the Earth. Your plumb would actually point, uh, let's say, towards this direction. There's, there will be a tilt in respect to the center of the Earth. 
So if the Earth wasn't rotating, it would point to the center. And because it is, it points a little bit towards the equator. So your plumb line now is in that direction, not in that direction. It's a little bit tilted. So you're saying the gravitational effect, I mean, the, uh, the rotation of the Earth uh, affects the gravitational downforce of the uh, plumb. Exactly, yeah. It, it changes its magnitude and it changes its direction a little bit. Uh, and then that's the that's first time I heard this one. That's, that's actually measurable. Like I, 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 I tried myself. It worked for me. Uh, you can try it yourself as well. So when you're going okay, to... So let me, let me ask you this question then. The other, the other one on uh, near the equator there. How come the, the, the rotation of the Earth is not affecting that one? No, it is. To the it's right. Slider. So this, is, this one has a smaller force than this one. Uh, this one is going to be heavier than this one. Because uh, let's say, let's isolate the forces here. So if we have an observer here, I'm going to put here because of that little dark line. And another observer here. So let's first draw the gravitational force. The gravitational force points towards the center. And same for this guy here. Now, if we get their centrifugal force, the centrifugal force points in that direction because it's rotating around this axis. And the same goes for this guy here. Uh, so, but because he's on the equator, it's an even bigger circle. Like this is this circle, this is a bigger circle. It's rotating even faster. So we have a, a bigger. Uh, centrifugal force. So now if you, if you sum those forces, what you're going to be left here is a force that points like around here for this guy. So it's going to be tilted towards the equator and it's going to be a little bit smaller. And this guy, they're just going to cancel out and what's going to be left is a smaller force pointing towards the same direction. So centrifugal force cancels out gravity and what's left is a smaller gravity. In this case, it doesn't cancel out very well, so you still, you're still left with a big enough force of gravity, but it's tilted towards the equator, and it's a little bit smaller. So those, those lines is where you would imagine the plumb bob would point? Uh, this is very exaggerated. This uh, green line here is like a, like a thousand times smaller than the red one. So it would still be pretty close to the red one, but the, the purple one here would be like somewhere here, let's see. And this one is just going to be smaller, it's going to be something like this. And you can, and you can get how, how much those, the size of those arrows in a local gravity calculator, for example. And when you're going to, let's say, Canada to the equator, you can use a pocket scale to check that out. I don't know what to say here, bro. Like, this is really similar. Wolfie tested this. He um got a pocket scales and a 500 gram testing weight, and um as he went to different airports in Australia, tested tested the weight and found that they um weigh less at the equator, closer the I closer tested, he got to the equator. I tested that as well. Uh, I'm I was at uh, 25.5 degrees south, and I went for to three degrees south. So it's a shift of 20, 22 degrees of latitude. And, and then before I did that, I went to local gravity calculator and got a prediction for how much things should be lighter when I got here. So I grabbed a bunch of objects, weighed them on a pocket scale I bought. And when I got here, the first thing I did, of course, was to measure them again, see if it matches uh, this difference. And it matched exactly like uh, the prediction was Half of a half a gram difference, and that's what I measured when I got here. So you would have to imagine that somewhere in Canada, where I'm at right now, I have a plumb bob. It's hanging. It's hanging down plumb, and you would have to imagine somewhere else on this sphere, there's another plumb bob hanging sideways. To me, that's uh, wizardry. That's fanciful thinking. That's I call that La La Land. Well, you understand that if gravity was, was, is real, then that, that would make sense, right? I mean, of course, it doesn't make sense if you don't believe in gravity. But if you did, 
that would make sense, right? Okay, show me, show me a plumb bob hanging sideways. You can't. Mm. Like, Have you ever seen it? one hanging sideways? No, plumb is always plumb. Basically, exactly. you went with your scale, your pocket scale, and you measured the things again. Did you tear, tear it out again? Uh, no, it didn't. Uh, did Wolf, anything? I Wolfie did in his one. I heard it. Yeah, and I, I'm just to be sure. There's no, no nothing affected the scale during the, the the trip. I'm going to do the same thing when I get back. See if I get the the initial weight again. Let me run I a feel... scenario by you and see how how nonsensical this is. Okay. Can we agree that we can establish plumb in one one location? Sure. We can agree that that, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so we take that plumb, right? And we start walking with it. And let's say we walk a thousand miles. Are you saying that orientation of that plumb now went from hanging up and down straight in a vertical position and it changed now sideways to a horizontal oh, it's still position? Gonna be down. It's still going to be down because as you're moving, across the surface of the Earth, if the surface of the Earth is spherical, you're also is going to be rotating around the surface, right? Because like I never said it was a north. circle. I'm just saying we're walking straight now. How, okay, yeah, but, let me put it to you this way. How far do you think yeah, you can uh, walk? I'll just gonna say real quick, uh, White's Word actually has a dual gyro test that actually would be able to, to delineate just this, having one with gimbals and one without, but I just want to interject that, that real quick. But yeah, go ahead, Essie. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, I'd like to hear more about that after. Yeah, so how far now? You have your plumb bob, right? We're, mm -hmm. on a, we're on like the salt flats or a real far in the prairies in Canada. It's, it's like level as far as the eye can see. Like, how mm -hmm. far do you think you can walk with that plumb and notice it like tilting? You never notice it tilting because your reference is the ground. So and, then, and, so and then it, it yeah. never, so then, so then it always hangs plumb. Yes, but it is tilting, but so is the ground as you're walking on the surface of the earth. So they're still going to be parallel. So and you see what you're doing parallel. here? You see what you're doing here? You're taking a reality, a plumb, right? Which you know always hangs plumb and somehow you're curving it around a sphere in your, in your brain. You know that you can walk as far as you want and you, when you hold that, you know you're not going to start tilting sideways. You know you're always going to be in the same. Your ears are going to feel the same thing. You're not going to. You're not going to feel like you're tilted. You know that. Yeah, but that's that's exactly what you should expect on the spherical Earth as well. Like in this example I just give you, what you just described would also happen. So that doesn't sound like an absurd to me. No, it wouldn't. I see one guy standing almost straight and another guy standing sideways. Yeah, and their downward is the purple arrow so to both of them the purple arrow points downward so they're both on top of the of the sphere you're saying right to to them yes to i mean to the first guy he's on top of the sphere to the other one he's on top of this there, there's no actual top of the sphere yeah that's that's your fantasy i live in reality i cannot envision such a thing you're just you're just a young guy that has bought into the model that we've all learned <laughs> and and it's like it's a fantasy bro it's like star trek so oh, you're not you're not pointing to anything that would actually make this model not viable because it no. the this model that I just described it still matches our day, daily observation and still matches what you're describing. So like when uh, have you ever seen a person uh one person like standing vertical and his his vertical being somebody else's horizontal, like you're describing here? Where where have you ever seen that? I shouldn't be able to you, see that. I would have to be in the North Pole looking to someone on the equator. How, how could I see that far? Where do you predict? Surely, like, my given, given your understanding of the of the globe model essay, where do you feel that should happen on it? Between which observers in which places? Don't ask me about your fantasy model. You're trying. You're trying to do this again. I thought you learned no, your lesson already. But you were trying so to. You're, make, you're, uh, <laughs> Yeah, you actually are trying oh, to make predictions now. Me too. I told you. 
You're, you're trying, trying to make a prediction about... based upon an understanding of a model, and I'm saying, where would you expect to see that prediction? Here you go straw mining me again. I'm not able to. Here you go straw mining me again. Well, Please don't let into our on conversation, bro. Either bring in something of of use, bro. Don't, don't do what you're doing. You're going to just aggravate me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're changing your orientation in the X, the axis, what, I, what I'm getting from what SC is saying, that should be measurable, detectable, because you actually are changing a very real geometry. If you have X, Y, Z, and you're changing one of those axes, that should actually be something that could be experienced and measured. If you're just claiming it's existing and assuming curvature and then just uh, assuming that model, that isn't actually verifying the change in very real orientation that you would be making while you're building. The argument, like the argument wasn't that this is real. Exactly the that. that. The argument was that uh, how, it, how it works on the globe model. And if the way it works on the globe model predicts the same thing as you experience on your daily life. So if you can't just point to something you experience in your daily life and say, well, uh, then your model can't be true because of X or Y, Z experience. No, because they they fit the, the model. They're, they're not what reputational. Model? <laughs> they can. Model. Where in, uh, like, uh, oh man, I'm trying to keep years. calm. Where is your where in your daily where in your daily uh, observations do you see somebody's vertical being somebody else's horizontal? Bacon. Yeah, that's where should you say that? that? That's where should you say that? On the yeah, earth. Why, why would you make it? Where? Yeah. That's a wrong prediction. Like uh, the, the the model that I just explained doesn't predict that you should be able to see that. Of course, in this drawing you can see that because you can see people that are in Canada and the equator at the same time. But when when can you do people when when can you see people in Canada and the equator at the same time? You you can't. You don't have to your see case, them. That's what the your model they got in space. <laughs> your case, that, your essay, your case rests on we should be able to see X in your model. Where does that happen? And, and the question is, before that's even an intelligible thing to answer, is where should it be seen? Or is it really a good test of the model? If there's no place you can say it should happen, given the model, then why does not seeing it become a, di a disproof of the model? Nice well, this, try. Because, I I mean, this is where, uh, the, yeah, the gyros. Because um, if you can take a gyroscope, which is rigid in space, and that can be measured and detected to be so, and then you mm -hmm. spin it up and then you travel over a distance, that uh, rigid in space gyroscope will still be in its position. And if it's a globe, that touches so that's bang on. The same, then it never tilted and the earth never turned. So that's bang on. That's absolutely bang on. If you've got a gyro and it's a good quality gyro and you spin it up, uh, you should be able to go from, say, the equator to the North Pole and, and measure that your orientation has changed 90 degrees or just stay at the equator or pretty much anywhere and um, measure the precession of the Earth. And indeed, you can with gyros. But that's not what SE is asking. SE is asking, where can I stand and see somebody else standing upright 90 degrees to me, which isn't predicted anywhere in the model. So he's trying to disprove the model by something, by asking us to, to present evidence for the model, which would actually no, you're straw mining me again. No, that's not what I said. I pointed at the picture he's shown, and I said one man is vertical, and another one is horizontal. But don't try to straw man me, writing on eggshells. I keep warning you, dude. I mean, well, one way I've thought as well that this could be tested. It does come. It, this would be a little bit optical and be laser light, so it would have to depend on the idea of light traveling straight. But if you shoot two lasers into the air and then have them meet in the middle and you can maybe fly a drone up to verify where they're actually intersecting um that's kind of what in my mind like what sc is saying like when you have that xyz axis if you're traveling a thousand miles like you said over the earth you're going to be in an actually different orientation so if you took a laser on a globe those two lasers are going to meet up in the air at a particular place that will work it with change the tilt of the xyz axis that's not is it just me or he's breaking up horribly yeah you you're, you're breaking you're up, you're breaking a little up. bit bro yeah i think your first one with the mechanical gyro is better i think i think that one's good too but the challenge you're going to get stuck in is it is an extended debate over whether let, let me see seven over six r or not like this idea of putting lasers and see where they meet 
Actually, it's uh, like I'm not sure if that's doable, but that, that 